Uh, what impacts do you think this move will have on the economy and the society at large? Uh, like you had um, Elumelu say, this will stop banditry in Nigeria. What do you think is the idea behind this whole move? Well, um, good evening once again, but you cannot separate the economy from security. And um, I think that also will help, um, maybe because of the cash movement, knowing that then these bandits are being paid a large, large amount of cash. So definitely it's going to help in the in the in the in the long run. So it's a good policy, especially it's a globe is the global best practice. And if we are the largest economy in Africa, I see no reason why we shouldn't be practicing it. So for me, I think it's good. It will address banditry, would address um, a lot of other fraudulent activities like money laundry. It will bring more Nigeria into the into the tax bracket, especially the informal sector. So there's a lot of advantage in the in the in the policy. But even with that, we know that there's a, a little bit of teething that will be done, especially that has to that will relate to the rural areas. All right. So we have uh, a report by Business Day that says the total number of registered uh, POS businesses in Nigeria has hit about 1.9 million, meaning we have some more having more than one terminal in the long run, which means employ more workers. And it's safe to say this is one of the highest employers of uh, people in the lower class, as it may be. Now, has it been considered that uh, a number of people will become jobless by this move? I think the CBN is looking at that uh, from the report we got. They say they are trying to look, do waiver for those uh, for the uh, POS terminal. But again, you shouldn't also forget that POS terminal has also become a point of crime too, for especially for uh, for fraudulent activities, whereby you hear that um, people pay money into a fraudster account in the bank and they withdraw it through POS. So I think the the CBN will come up with policies. Um, that will, will, will guide against this and also policy that um, maybe they have to come up with some other um, details, especially for the POS. Uh, maybe they have to um, have a certain amount of money when it comes here. You need to do the, the I mean, maybe they have to fee form, do the BVM, do verification and all that. But I think um, it's something the CBN should look into because um, that, that, um, that sector has been one of the uh, the best policy of this present CBN administration uh, when it comes to the POS terminal because it has even brought the rural, area, rural people into the bankable space. And also, even if it's not only the rural people, even in, in Lagos, when you go to marketplaces where you want to use their card and they say, no, we don't have card, before you say anything, they're calling you a POS uh, person to do the pay. So definitely, I think POS is something they should look at. I mean, also in the area of job creation, that's also helping job creation. But as they are doing that also, mm -hmm. they should also look at um, improving security, especially in, 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 in ways that the CBN has become, uh, the POS has become a source for criminality also. All right, so I need to ask, how do you think the government can justify forcing the citizens, uh, will I say compelling the citizens to go cashless when some government-owned initiatives like the train stations are still strictly cash only? I think the government will start with their own. They will definitely go cashless. Okay. Uh, we, we know the reasons uh, why sometimes this government establishment don't want to do, go cashless because with them, you know, they have this, uh, the, uh, the single digit uh, treasury bill account. They don't want the money to go in there because those, all, those money can be used for daily, daily activities of those people. I think they got the single treasury account. I think the government will need to look at that because charity has to begin uh, um, at home. For Nigerians, I don't think this policy is anything new because uh, we are we're already in, the, in it. The only difference is that they've reduced the limit of our cash that we need to withdraw from the system. Remember that um, the POS was 150, but now they're just saying in a week you have to do um, 100,000, it must be 20,000, 20, naira daily. I think that is, um, for me, that's a major challenge. Then again, when you, you also um, look at the withdrawal limit for, for individuals, it has just been reduced comparable to what it was before. Same thing with um, companies. So it's not something new. It's not something Nigeria uh, will be struggling to buy into. Remember that this policy initially was used only in Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Kano before we involve other states. So definitely is the right thing to do. It will, it will help in, in a lot of ways. But my major challenge is if you are going cashless, then you need to build a very strong um, cyber security so that um, 
a lot of people don't begin to lose their money through fraudulent activity. So for me, I, that's what I think the, the bank, the CBN should be doing in connecting with the bank to make sure they build a robust cyber security space. And again, in the sense of failed payment, they need to reduce the, 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 the amount of time such issues are resolved. Because if somebody goes to withdraw 20000 which is the only amount of money he wants to withdraw, and you are saying it has failed, it has de debited, and, and, and the person does not have the fund in his hand, so you tell him to wait for seven working days. So I think those are part of the uh, things that I think the CBN should work on if they really want this cashless policy to work well. Okay, I need to ask, uh, ahead of the 2023 election, do you think this might in a way reduce the rate of vote buying and other forms of electoral practices in the country? Definitely it will, and that is why you see the political the politicians are beginning to raise highbrow. They need to understand that um, the CBN did not act outside its act uh, that was passed by the National Assembly, and they also need to remember that there is separation of power you have the National Assembly, you have the Executive, you have, and you have the Judiciaries. So they should know, and uh, for me, I think it will scope vote buying because especially you won't tell a Nigerian to vote for you, then later on you transfer the money to them. They will not even accept because they don't even trust you. So definitely it's one policy that will help in the area of vote buying. I sincerely think it will help, especially if they have the political will, because when you see the politicians start talking, oh, can we postpone it? It's all for their own um, selfish interests. But if they go ahead with it, and I, I strongly believe that the president is aware, the president must have given the CBN governor the go ahead. Remember the redesign of the currency where we told the president, where well, they didn't know the president came out and said, I know. And I think the same thing we did. So I, I think definitely it's a policy that has come to stay. It will see the light of day, but there may be a little really rejigging, especially in the area of the POS terminal and maybe the ATM machine. As of that, I don't see any reason why we should not um, um, go ahead with this policy. All right, we have been speaking with uh, Mukta Mohammed, is a financial analyst. Thank you so much for joining us on the news tonight. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.